Good morning, everybody. Thanks, uh, thanks very much for having me here. And um, it gives me great pleasure to be uh, talking in front of you today. Um, just wanted to start by uh, getting a show of hands as to who in the audience here are uh, medical practitioners. And hands up who are not. Right, OK, about 50-50. Um, this is a really visionary conference because I've never attended in my 20 odd years of practicing medicine a conference that really just gives the finger to everything that we do as, <laughs> as medical practitioners. And I really think that's a, uh, a reflection of Mr. Glassman and, uh, and, a, and, a vi and the visionary person that he is. Um, and that's why I'm absolutely delighted to be here talking about my core business, which is spinal disease. As a neurosurgeon, that's what I see most of. Um, spinal disease, and if, if we subcategorize that, it's, it's really back pain. And I have to declare a massive conflict of interest, unlike the other speakers, I have a massive conflict of interest. This is, this is my core business, and, and these, are the, these are the platforms uh, by which I tackle the, uh, the chaos and the mess that's within the back pain therapeutic industry. So um, the other question I've got for you guys is, who here actively participates in CrossFit? Almost 100%. Um, does anyone in the audience not know what Fran is? <laughs> Anybody? Does anyone not do CrossFit regularly? All right. Just wondering if you'd mind me just doing a randomized control trial very quickly. Um, if I could just get the two, just anyone who, let's, let's break it down a bit. Who, who does CrossFit once a week? Wow. Okay. Um, would you guys mind? I haven't, I haven't obtained ethics approval for this, so you, you can decline. Would you mind standing up for me if you don't do CrossFit more than once? That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> and and <laughs> could you just stand side on so that the, the audience can see you? And just imagine... <laughs> Um, if you take your hands out of your pocket as well, fantastic. So this is a randomised control trial, right? I didn't pre-select these guys, they selected themselves. Um, just imagine that you've got uh, um, itchy knees, okay? And just side on, just, just bend forward and scratch your knees. Excellent, excellent. Um, now could I get, we have to keep the numbers the same to, to make it a proper trial, uh, two crossfitters who crossfit five days a week. Okay, stand up, stand up in this position there, and the lady over there. And now, side on as well. And, yep, perfect. And just imagine you've got itchy knees and just scratch your knees for me. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Sit down, guys. Thanks for, thanks for participating, participating in that. So what I was doing there was just uh, assessing your default movement patterns for a very simple task of daily living, a simple task of daily living that you would probably do unknowingly a thousand times a day. Okay, so we then multiply that by seven and then 365 and, and then you know, over the last 20 years, uh, you can start to make some conclusions, all right? So thanks very much for that. I might publish that later. <laughs> uh, so uh, why am I here today? Well, firstly, I'm a CrossFitter and I've got my bangles, and I can't wait to get into the Colosseum again. Um, but uh, secondly, because I'm a brain and spinal neurosurgeon, and this time last year, I was at this conference, I was sitting in that seat there, and listening to the great uh, talks from uh, Dr. Gary Fetke and um, um, Professor Tim Noakes. And I was sort of th thinking about what I was doing back home, and I thought, gee, I wonder if if Greg and, and the CrossFit community uh, would be interested um, in knowing uh, the power of, of, of their core business, which is functional movement. And so um, uh, it's just a, a wonderful pleasure that uh, Karen Thompson asked me to pop along and, and talk about what we do back home. Um, now, there's 12 key points here that really uh, um, summarise my, my presentation and, and what I've been applying 
to patients clinically over the last uh, five or six years. Um, and if you understand these key points intimately, you'll be well equipped to solve what seems like the very complex, but in actual fact, the very simple back pain puzzle that has perplexed uh, many medical and allied health therapists for a very long time, resulting in an incredible amount of human suffering and economic burden. I'm passionate about back pain because I know that we can do better than the current industry approach, which I believe is using a flawed paradigm. It's band-aiding symptoms and focusing on misguided treatment targets. We actually have the ability, if we just open our eyes and our minds, to the power of functional movement to cure the disease. And this, this type of media is really viral, uh, and I see it every day, and obviously I'm, I'm tuned into the social media pages that talk about this, but it is, it is everywhere, and it's telling patients that just live with your back pain, back pain can't be cured, and it's, it's absolutely uh, um, misleading. This is uh, what the World Health Organization says about back pain. It's the leading cause of disability on the planet. Okay, now we've heard a lot about metabolism and metabolic disease from our other speakers, but I think in terms of back pain, there's a lot of silent suffering and there's a massive economic drain on society because no one really cares about people with back pain except their loved ones. And you don't have fun runs for back pain and you don't have, you know, um, the fundraising events because back pain are considered to be, the, you know, they're a cohort of people that don't want to work um, and it's just not a very sort of glorified condition. But in terms of dollars and suffering, the World Health Organization has said this is number one cause of disability on the planet. Even more profound to me was that if, if Coach Glassman had not created CrossFit, which I embraced uh, years ago, and then subsequently Olympic weightlifting, and I'm, I'm not even very good at it, uh, I, I would never with my medical and, and specialty training have been able to identify the discriminator that allows the world's most vexing uh, physical ailment to be cured. Um, and a lot of people find that quite hard to believe. So this is why CrossFit trainer uh, is my leading credential on my CV and bio. Uh, it's why my office is a CrossFit box and, and why all of my staff are CrossFitters. Of course, we have other credentials too, but in relation to fixing back pain, first and foremost, we are CrossFitters. This is what allows us to understand the fundamental science of functional movement that I can confidently say is the cure for low back pain. And uh, I've just got another video to show you too. I've got a few videos in this talk um, of us doing our bit to try to educate the community and primary care physicians uh, to get this vital message out. has expressed uh, that they see many patients with low back pain. It really made me start to think, what are we doing wrong here? And that's what led to this, the evolution of this centre here called the Functional Movement Training Centre. Blaming uh, genetics, blaming body weight, blaming weakness uh, or tight muscles for back pain is just unhelpful. With anti-skill and anti-movement, we're not going to succeed at looking after back pain. The moment you send a patient to a physical therapist who lays you down on a couch, you're already failed. Every patient that comes to the Functional Movement Training Centre leaves with a new skill. really it was 
so refreshing to have a surgeon that not only fixed part of the problem, but saw that the problem was bigger than that small little disc in, in my husband's back. And it was such an eye-opening experience for me, not just as his wife, but as a physiotherapist. Like professionally, I just wanted to be a part of it. Back pain and neck pain or spine pain is not a diagnosis. Movement dysfunction is the disease that causes the pain. So I've had a low back pain myself for about 15 years, on and off. Had some experience with different sorts of therapies and treatments. This sounds like it would be easy to do and um, it's really encouraging the results. I now see what my real role is in sorting these problems out and where the, uh, the functional movement program can help correct people with long term or even acute pain affecting their backs, whether it's uh, neck or low lumbar or sacral back pain. Our program is called NeuroHab for a specific reason. We are rehabilitating the nervous system. The nervous system is the steering wheel. It's the controller of movement. So let's take a look at the uh, typical back pain patient. Now, is there a typical back pain patient? This is what makes back pain appear to be complex. And what do I mean by indiscriminate condition? Well, the paradigm in place today is to provide the following advice to patients. If you are heavy, uh, lose weight. If you're weak, get stronger. If you're tight, get your muscles released. If you're old, get used to it, take medications, or, or have surgery if it's bad enough. Now, at first, this seems like pretty logical advice. Uh, but what about, what about these people then? Why do, they, why do they also have back pain? And that's what I mean by indiscriminate, because every day I'll see an athlete with back pain. I'll see a young person with back pain. I'll see an old person with back pain. And so we can't use those, those uh, reasons to justify why someone has back pain, but yet that's what, the, um, that's what we currently are doing. And if you're working in the back pain therapy, therapeutic industry and you offer this advice to patients, then you're not really tuned into the discriminator that causes low back pain and you'll not help your patients cure their back pain condition. You may think that you've helped if the patient's symptoms improve with your input, but you are merely association, not causation, and uh, their symptoms will return with vengeance next time. It's a bitter pill for the industry to swallow to accept that patient's symptoms may well have just got better without our input as a doctor or a physical therapist, and we are merely in association with the outcome. Now, why is this the case? Because in the early stages, patient symptoms do improve regardless uh, of what we do as a, uh, a therapist. And in fact, the statistics show that if you have an acute flare-up of back pain, um, it'll get better within a week to three months. But of those people that that have those acute flare-ups, 75% of them will have another flare-up within 12 months' time. Now, how do we treat patients who don't improve with our service? Now, it's like Dr Fung mentioned. We blame the patient or other external factors, anything other than to take accountability ourselves. Now, failed rehab syndrome or failed rehabilitation syndrome is not recognised in literature. But failed back surgery syndrome is widely discussed in peer-reviewed literature. Despite the fact that the vast majority of people who have back pain have never even seen a surgeon or been touched by a scalpel. Now, the place for surgery in back pain is very clear to me. I tell my patients that my surgery on your spine cannot cut away your pain. 
there is no such thing as back pain surgery. And, and pain is not a lesion. Pain is not a tumour. Pain is not a, an abscess. It can't, it can't be cut away. What surgery can do, though, is give you the potential to eliminate the disease that caused your symptoms of back pain and secondary spinal structural breakdown. Consider it to be like a stepping stone that is only rarely required to get you to the other side where the effective rehabilitation lies. Our biggest challenge every day is educating patients to not revert back to the same failed rehabilitation syndrome that got you onto the operating table in the first place. Because if you do that, of course, the surgical outcome will be a perceived failure. And ideally, we actually want to get to patients before they even need surgery. Every treatment recommendation listed here in the latest best practice guidelines has a structural and symptomatic focus rather than a functional root cause focus. It becomes clear why the epidemic of low back pain symptoms is exploding around us. It's almost impossible to explain the structure function concept to professors of spine surgery, pain medicine and physical rehabilitation who have dedicated their lives to a structure and symptom based methodology. This is reflected by the guidelines on back pain management and the section on causation. This is the best that the Lancet Back Pain Series publication can do to describe the cause of low back pain. Completely structure focused, not one sentence of consideration to a functional movement problem being a possible cause for back pain symptoms. And this was only published about three or four months ago. Movement dysfunction is the disease that is not yet in the textbooks. It's the disease that causes low back pain symptoms. And this is an illustration of the flight path, I like to call it, of patient symptoms when the industry fails to intervene with a functional fix in time. Our patient's back pain symptoms relapse and remit with, a, with structure and symptom-focused therapy in the acute and subacute phase but their movement dysfunction increases in severity and becomes entrenched, causing more frequent and intense episodes of pain that they can't recover from before they eventually succumb to secondary structural breakdown and, of course, the need for a structural repair.